there we go okay so yeah so today is going to be problem solving and uh, uh, I made lots of change uh, lots of little things about milestone 3 um, and I just realized that I did not even put its overview on yet so as we are speaking right now I'm going to upload the overview of the session two and we're gonna I'm gonna add that one to the to the to the link uh, works uh, milestone four and five is gonna come up today both of them workshop nine is already up um, so you're gonna have your hands full for whatever you want to do to the end of the semester and then um, the all the labs that we are going to have will be like this one which means it's gonna be problem solving so I'm going to come to school and or if something happens like today we're going to be online and uh, we are going to um, uh, we are going to um, uh, help uh, solving everyone's problem so as we are speaking right now I'm just gonna open YouTube over here and uh, upload the overview of the of MS3 still there's people have one week to submit it so so again, remember, if uh, if you have submitted your milestone three successfully and um, with the previous things before all the settings were done, um, don't worry, just keep it that way. Let it be. This is fine. But make sure for milestone three and four, you actually apply the, the changes. Um, just test it. Make sure everything works because the first tester of MS3 did not test the... Uh, the right type function but this one is testing so you can actually see if it works or not so you can do dash feedback and just uh, run it one more time see if it runs or not if you have submitted it you're fine um, but if you didn't then you have to uh, submit it in a new way um, before we begin anybody have any uh, questions that want to ask now sure um i have a question with regarding like handling derived classes okay so so far for like all of our workshops we've kind of had this thing where like at any point where um the client tries to change like a member variable if it's set to like a wrong value value mm -hmm. we set the whole object to an em empty state right mm -hmm. so like from the constructors or we're doing like the copy assignment or um overloading the operator equal any type of set function like mm. in any uh chance where a member variable can be set to an invalid value we set the entire object to an empty state right oh so how you, um, oh, okay so you mean to have just one piece of object to be embedded and so not the yeah, entire so thing like, um the question's more so pertaining like um, so far, like when we're overloading like operator um, bool, um, can we use like the base classes, mem like member variable, for example, as a key to check like, oh, is this in a uh, safe empty state or if this is like a, a valid thing? Because the entire object of a derived class comprises of the base and derived. But I guess in terms of like, in terms of, I guess, good design, we should only have to check for one thing if our entire oh, object oh, is set to invalid. Oh, yeah. See, that, that's a very common practice if I understood properly. Sometimes even the people not to worry about setting this and that to valid and all the stuff. They just make sure there is no memory leak. They have a flag. They only check that flag. They actually add a Boolean flag, like is empty. Is empty and so they only check like, like I guess, m underline is empty it's a boolean thing when something goes wrong they set the flag hmm. so and set the flag so it's kind of like see out and then you clear it the flag go back to through so the object becomes active again oh okay so, so it doesn't even have to be like a member like well it's like a separate member variable that that just holds like oh was it like uh set to an empty state at one point kind of thing so that's just like peter this is something very important to realize over here um when when you are the programming you are the god of that logic <laughs> it's your responsibility and your decision how to make the thing safe 
right and think of all the circumstances that might happen that somebody finds a loophole and get into your object when it's invalid and tries to access it where it's not supposed to now to accomplish that you can come up with any strategy that you like as long as it ends up to a recognizable invalid state of your object either you put it on the caller program's shoulder to say okay when the object gets invalid I'm gonna set the flag to right and I'm gonna have a boolean character boolean cast overloaded you check my object if it returns false if it's it's in, invalid and it's your responsibility not to use an invalid function so you make that clear sorry not to use an invalid class invalid object right. and it's the responsibility of the client when I say client I don't mean the user sitting behind the computer I'm using I'm telling another programmer using your class it's the responsibility of that programmer to understand that your object is not foolproof but it has uh, a flag that it can be checked before every operation so it is absolutely like your choice how to design it unless you have a system analyst and the system analyst tells you okay this class has to be foolproof if it's out of if it is in, a, in an invalid state it should completely get inactivated and don't don't do anything like like O stream right so like if it's invalid don't print anything or I mean, Maybe like complete, yes, like so you have an, a kind yeah. of an if statements inside each function of yours to check to see if it's invalid, don't do anything. Gotcha. Don't accomplish okay. the thing. And then they have to acknowledge the object's invalidity, if that's the word, and <laughs> clear it before they continue. So they acknowledge, say, oh, I know you're bad. I'm clearing it again. I'm setting things straight. Let's do it again. Gotcha. Again, it's okay. hundred percent your choice. That, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Thank you. No problem. I am actually one step away from posting this thing, so it was done on fourteenth. Um, the date. I'm just uploading it. I want to add it to the the overview to the to the thing. So next, next next and copy the URL and publish okay so we need to update that over here sorry professor hello uh, if we like like just to add to Peter's point if we like if we're creating a derived class do we want it to be like coupled with the base class like like you said, it's our choice, but is it like good practice to, like, let's let's say, change the attributes of the base class, um, like, like change the attributes of the base class from the derived class, just to check if the object is valid. Um, okay, so uh, let let me uh, make that like absolutely clear. Before doing that, let me just not to screw this up let me just put this thing up over here for a second just give me two seconds so i'm gonna go over here and milestone three so this is gonna be the overview one that's gonna be the one let me just add this over here and save All right. Okay. So let, let me go get back to you on that. Okay. So first of all, let's understand the fact that when you are doing programming, there is no golden rule that I can put for you. And it always follows. Like I would say, you never put a create a friend uh, for a function and you have to put an accessor. No, not really. Sometimes you have to. So is it okay to access the base classes attributes from derived class to put it in an empty in a in an invalid empty state probably if it is invalid if the logic dictates so there is no it, there is one thing that you need to realize carmen over here 
that your base class is no longer a base class when you already derived it into another class and you create the class out of that one you are it you are not invading anybody's privacy it's part of that class you're cr creating a new class so if the logic dictates that the base should base as state should change for the the child for the derived class to do something by all means don't think that you are changing another objects they are the same it's not like you have another base class object sitting independently from this class and you're changing it remember this is all one thing that's uh, uh, point one uh, are we okay with this Garmin yeah okay sense. number two if you think that the base some of the parts of the base class is not to be disturbed by the derived class make it private and give it no access therefore the child class cannot do anything with it and they have to go around it any way they can and if they cannot go around it either they have to change their design or talk to the person who designed the base class and tell them this is not possible because of such and such they sit in a meeting they they decide what to do and they make it work so there is no golden rule to tell you no don't touch it or you can change it it all depends on business logic Okay. All right. Any other qu good questions are coming? Nice. Anyone else? Seriously? That's it. We had the class for fifteen no. minutes. Okay, Faye, go ahead. Hi. Um, I have. Um, so we're allowed to modify, um, the previous milestone. You're not allowed. To, you're encouraged to. Oh, we're we, we ask okay. you to do so. That's a healthy. Yeah, so like, th I'm sorry. That's a healthy way of development. As a matter of fact, MS3 has some major problems that MS4 is not going to work with it. So the first thing in MS4, I'm going to tell you to do that to MS3, to make few functions protected. Oh, okay. So, okay. I'm so, just wondering. Yeah, so the only time that you you should not change it is when you are doing your milestone five, that is your final deployment. Okay. And in real so, life, um, eh? and in mm -hmm. real life, that happens too. Every single update that you're getting for any software that you had is exactly that. Okay. okay. I see. I see. I did more to, like when I when I uh, com when I was doing my MS two, I did another function to MS one. So when I submit it. I don't have to resubmit MS1, right? Not at all. No, no, MS... no, 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 no. See, we require to, for your MS1 to have minimum functionality so it can prove to go to the next step. If you pass that minimum functionality, you're good to go. The fact that you are changing it, and of course, you're going to add that one to your reflection at the end of the project. The project is going to have a reflection. So at the end of that one, you're going to put it in your reflection that I, I, I changed the specs of my milestone one to make sure that this thing can happen. I added this feature. You talk about all your projects and the story of what you have done in these five milestones at the end, and you are encouraged to do so. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I see. Thank you. No problem. Anyone else? Uh, hi, for that, I have a question. Hi, D. Uh, hi. Uh, should we always uh in instantiate the base class in the derived class initialization area? Uh, I talked about it. The uh, if you re remember, like uh, I I told you three different ways of doing mm -hmm. the copy yes. constructor in class. Yes. Okay. Yes. The answer is: Do you need to? If the answer is yes, then yes, any way you need to. If the default constructor of base suffices and works for you, then that's it. Your base must be usable for derived class. Otherwise, the, f the whole purpose of inheritors, inheritance is moot. If, <coughs> if you n any way you need your base class to be, in your drive class, you should do it when you build your drive class. Any way you okay. want. Okay. 
and um, and you usually it's not the default you need to set few things in your base class if it's just the default that's that sounds a little fishy to me it's like a, the design is not that complete because usually you don't need to like when you when you when you reuse someone else's something you always set it up and then use it so usually <laughs> Uh, default constructor is not enough, but you need to somehow create one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Um, I could do the overview for uh, workshop nine now. Uh, anybody wants me to do that? Do that. Now, let me just write over here. If I can type it. So would you like me to do the overview for workshop nine now? <laughs> Somebody said no. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, Okay, so if that's not the case, then uh, we're going to do it on Monday uh, during the uh, NAA's lab. But uh, so you know what I'm going to do? So uh, for those who do not want to, you know what I'm going to do? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. So we're going to finish the session and we'll fin when the session is over, if we have time, those who do not want to listen it, they can go. And those who want to, I can do the overview now and put it up on the, on uh, as a recording, and you can watch it later. I think that's a good way to do it. Are we okay with that? All right, perfect. All right. Okay, but at least I need a couple of people to be here when I'm doing the overview. I don't want to just talk to myself. So um, that's uh, that's an important thing. Um, okay. Anyone else? Any questions? or problems or things you want to talk about. I guess this is separate, but I'm still trying to learn that get dynamic C string thing that you did. And <laughs> it's kind of like blowing my mind still. No, that, again, that's not an efficient one. It's something that oh, okay. I've done in front of the class. So there are lots of um, just in time fixings in it because I didn't follow like, like, I saw whether I think I added to the null index pointer. You see that when I was did something like that. Yeah, I... yeah, probably bec that was because I didn't measure the memory for something properly, and null was falling one behind every single time, and I added one to it just to fix it. So <laughs> again, the code is not the most efficient code, but you can always use it as a blueprint to write your own in a very good way. Okay. But if you need me to explain it, sure, I can do that too. I, yeah, would, I, I, would would I would rather you find it out yourself. That's going to be, that's, that's <laughs> much more helpful. If I tell it to you, um, it's, you don't learn how to hack. You follow? Okay. You because, need, yeah. Because I, I mean, there, there was definitely some, some times when I was genuinely confused, like, um, how, like, get. You want me to bring it up it? so, so I can answer your questions? Uh, sure, yes, please. Okay, sure, and I'll do that. This is what's what today's about, so I'm doing it. So I think we had it in uh, November 16th thingy, I think I had it. Uh, I'm not too sure. I could send you the no, code. No, I'll, I'll, or... I'll open the last yeah. notes that we had over there and probably... Oh, yeah, I think you added it there, too. Yeah, this is the one. Yeah. I think I kind of get lost at the line 52. Like, the, like what, what, what's kind of happening there? Because, like, I know you were saying, like, oh, yeah, uh, at one point, you're, you're getting one of the pointers to point. Um, so, so the C string like that starts at the beginning, that initially right. looks at the beginning of the... So C string, okay, the C string is where to copy into. 
okay so um i would i can call it i have to go this block current block okay so c string we can call it mm. where to copy okay okay let's see if it makes sense now whoa why is it highlighting everything there we go so <laughs> in here i'm saying where to copy is at the beginning of the thing because i just created that right right and to return is where to copy the very first time right the first index because that's right, the overall. very beginning of where everything is getting copied right right so to return has the very beginning of like, exactly copy. so that's yeah. my to return that is standing over there it's not going to change right okay then i'm going to say where so I, then i'm going to say get the line where i'm supposed to copy up to the allocation unit right right so it reads up to the amount that i have allocated over here and if it doesn't fail life is beautiful i come over here and i continue with adjusting the size to the final size or if it fails it means it's reached to the allocation unit now i have to add to it correct yes i have a size that i initialize initially added to set it to allocation unit because that's the initial value that we have correct yes now i'm going to say to that size add the allocation unit so whatever the allocation unit is another allocation unit is added to it right okay then i'm going to now that I have a new memory, I have to copy everything right from the beginning of everything into the temp, correct? Yes. So temp now becomes the to return one. And so so now I have a bigger place it's in to return, correct? You have a bigger place in to return. Because to return is now grown. It used yeah. to be allocation unit, now it's size plot my allocation unit, correct? right okay now that it's done i have some stuff at the beginning of it correct yes for to return yeah right. i have some stuff at the beginning of it. because i have some stuff at the beginning of it i cannot copy again right at the beginning i have to see where i'm supposed to copy okay i'm supposed to concatenate to it Right. So where to copy is pointing. Where like to copy the... is says is saying go to the size minus uh, uh, go to the size. So this size is not still set to the uh, allocation unit is not added to it. It's the old size. Right. So go to the old size. Okay. Reduce one over here to go back to make it null. So it becomes. Uh, uh, uh where the null was at the end go one back okay that's that null index is essentially where the final null is going to be set at originally it's one because uh we're going to have one thing in it so that's the null index and then when we when we actually uh want to know where to put that thing we're going to say size that's where the end of data is reduce by one so go back one and that is where uh i need to start copying because that's where the the, the the null was at the end right okay so now that this happened this actually it it finds the index of the null at the end of the what it was last writ read it starts copying over the null in the next one but now i need to make the size bigger because i made it bigger so i will i will make that allocated allocation unit affect the size and now size is the new size that we have i clear cn i go back up and i'm going to say copy where the null of the last read was so get lines able to kind of know where to start reading from like if you tell the get line reads it from the buffer of the keyboard whatever oh. it read it's already read the rest are in keyboard it doesn't need to know it tells the keyboard to give it to me. And as soon as it reaches the backslash and that is coming from keyboard, it stops. So everything is piling. It's as if, let's put it this way. It's as if you have a, a, a bowl of sugar and you have a measuring cup and you have a second bowl at left. Every time you 
dig into the source of the sugar, you pick some of the sugar and you put it in the other one. Correct? Right. It's the exact same thing. So get line digs into the sugar from the keyboard and gets the data from the keyboard. If it reaches to the end of it, it says, I moved everything. I got everything from the keyboard. But if there is anything left in keyboard, it fails. It tells you that it couldn't finish the keyboard. Therefore, I failed. You told me to read to the end because it's get line. If it was get, it wouldn't have failed. Because get just says get something. It's like, get a scoop of sugar from the bowl. Fine. I'm not going to fail because I got a scoop. But if I told you get everything from the bowl, which is get line, go to the end of the data entry from keyboard, then C is going to see and is going to tell you, hey, I read it, but there's still stuff left in keyboard. Hence, resizing and resetting where to continue to read. Okay. The best way to do did you try to walk through it on a piece of paper with one I, of those four colored pens? I didn't try to do, do it on the uh, pen and paper, but I did so, do, it so like, do, like, do it and everything's going to crystal clear. Literally walk through it. Then maybe you can fix this ugly thing that I have written over here. <laughs> okay. I'll try to give it a shot. Okay. But just th on the you... paper. So <laughs> draw everything that you see, or if you have a small whiteboard at home, fine something like that just draw exactly what you see and walk through it and make the allocation unit four and do it only two times so and put over there 10 okay and try to read 10 characters using the allocation unit of four and see how it works okay i'll write that down for myself okay yeah yeah and there was another way to do it actually i did it another way sometime i can put that one up to if you if you won't, but that's that was character by character. So I did it character by character, which is awful, but this is better. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so yeah, so that's that one. Uh, anyone else? Any question? Yeah. Dina, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Are we, um, are we encouraged to use the stream class? And are, are we going to eventually get rid of the C string thing and upgrade to... A string class? We are getting rid of C string in OP345. Students are too weak in usage of arrays and pointers. If I give them mm -hmm. a string, it's like I want to teach you to drive a manual stick car and I give you an automatic car. You're never going to learn it. Okay. So you have to do this. I want you to struggle with this and try to do it yourself. So when you go to OP345 <laughs> and you are using a string, you know what happens behind the scene. Okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> oh, hi, professor. She can't wait to get rid of that string thingy. Yes. So we are so we are not allowed to use the string class in workshop eight. Only this is what you are allowed to use. These four lines. Oh, okay. Okay. That's the Thank only you. thing that... you're allowed to use. Um, okay. 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 Yeah. That. <laughs> but we can also that's... use the string yeah. length, right? Uh, the, uh, dot length because it it is included in the notes. It's optional, isn't it? Okay. What? Yeah. Mean? String dot length to do what? Like. The only time you're allowed to use string is when you want to get information from keyboard and you don't know what the size is. So other than that, there is no, you cannot use string at all for anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I got your meaning. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, so, so, and there is no need for string length here. So if you want to share, I don't know. If you, I don't know if, what you're going to do with the string length in this context, but sure. I, I think they, like, they just want to know like the string length just so they can copy like the C string version of that string object. But then you could either use like string length, like your global function, or they can use like that method on the string object to return like the length of the string. Sure. I think that's what she's, sure. she's trying to well, say. Why yeah. not? Sure. You can use it for, for to, to get something from, I, I don't know why you need it, but if you want to use it, sure you can. So it means you don't you don't want to use allocation and copying. You want to actually do it manually yourself and don't use string uh, string copy. And you want to know exactly how many it is and go sure. Yeah, I think that's what they're trying to do. 
No problem. Yeah, oh. Professor. So I, I used the string object to get the user input, but I did the memory allocation manually. That that's fine, right? Oh yeah. So 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 and you're you're using string to get a, a string from keyboard, not an integer, right? That's right, that's right. Yeah, no, you're fine, you're absolutely fine. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. As long as your mission is to do this function with a string, you're fine. If you do it this okay. way, you're my hero. But if you do it like this, then you're fine. I don't want to be a hero, it's too complicated. <laughs> you just want to submit the damn thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well said, huh? Sure, sure, that's sure. funny. Of course, of course. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anyone else? Questions? Anyone? No? All right. Okay. So that's uh, our lecture, uh, our lab for today. And uh, I'm going to stop the recording, then I'm going to prepare and uh, do an overview for workshop nine. Okay, so any who do not want to, anybody who do not want to listen to this um, um, overview of workshop nine can leave, but you can stay and ask questions so um, it becomes an interactive thing so we can actually work on it properly. So let me stop the recording now.